Hello everybody, this is Danilo Cuellar from PeaceWineAcrism.com out here in the magnificent nature, the spontaneous order that surrounds us all. So I want to continue my conversation about this nature science documentary series I'm watching with my kids. Because there was one part where they mentioned how plants have an, an enormous impact on transforming the world around them and specifically the way of roots going down deep into the ground making the soil stable less susceptible to landslides create you know through their interlocking network of roots and as well as breaking up rocks. This was fascinating to me, how plants and roots can are so powerful over time, they can sever rocks that have taken millions of years to form through enormous amounts of pressure. And life is so powerful that it can sever these rocks, crack them, in the center and through cracking them produce well leave open spaces where gases enter where fluids enter and over time this kind of heats up and somehow affects the volcanoes and produces volcanic eruptions and then the resultant lava produces more land more earth thereby thoroughly transforming the world around them and the message was that life is equivalent to change in order for us to recognize what life is what is a good definition of life one definition is the ability to terraform its environment to change a hostile environment and make it suitable for life. This does not only apply to humans, <laughs> as the green eco movement would like you to believe, this applies to all life. All animals change their environment, do what they can to ensure their own survival, to ensure their self-preservation. And this is deemed okay, because it's natural. <laughs> However, when humans attempt to transform their environment in order to make their in order to make the climate and their built environment more hospitable, more habitable to humans, that is deemed as unnatural and unsafe and dangerous. And this hypocrisy in thinking um, is deeply indicative of the the anti-human perspective whereas the way I see it as this nature documentary so aptly summarized life is change life is changing its environment the earth does not stay the same at all <laughs> the earth is always changing regardless of the presence of human beings species Many species have gone, come and gone. Perhaps 99% of species that have ever existed are gone and replaced by new ones. There is always turnover. There is always life, birth, maturity, and death. That is the way of nature. And we are no exception. In order for us to thrive to the billions, we had to have terraformed our environment to make it suitable for human life. There is no other way around it. Some people who are proponents of this green eco movement think that human beings should live a low carbon footprint life. That we should live as though we are not impacting the world around us. 
And I would say that that is thoroughly impossible. Not only is it impossible, it is dangerous and it is anti-human and anti-life to think that we can thrive and live without transforming and changing our environment. Now, when I say transform the environment, yes, that does mean that it will disrupt the life cycles and the habitats of other animals, of other species. But that's what change is. <laughs> change is always a turnover. Some animals, some species are growing and thriving and some are on the decline towards extinction and their demise. And it's kind of amusing that we only mourn the large animals, the snow leopards, the Bengal tigers, the lions, the whales. We mourn these animals because they are so majestic, so magnificent. And yet, their presence is not so vital as the presence of, let's say, ants or termites or, you can go even smaller, bacteria. If ants or bees, we could say, if bees were to disappear, there would be a thorough collapse of the plant environment since they are the primary pollinators of many plants. And yet no one would really, there is no save the bees or save the ants or save the termites <laughs> or save the bacteria. And yet human beings require bacteria in their gut. We require symbiotic, we have a symbiotic relationship with many forms of bacteria that help us in digestion, in assimilation of the food that we take in, without which we would die immediately. We are life dependent on these bacteria. And yet there is no save the bacteria political campaign, is there? <laughs> or, or, or save the termites. Who cares about the termites, right? So, yes, the snow leopard is beautiful. Yes, the Bengal tiger is majestic and magnificent. But they are no more important than any other species. Just because they, we can see them, we can analyze them, we can study them, and let's say they are larger than us, we might think that they're more important, but no, they are not more important. Life is the ability to terraform its environment, to shape it into an environment where life can thrive. And this is what human beings have done over millennia, and it has been an outright success. We have blossomed from a few thousands population to almost 8 billion people. That is a magnificent achievement and that should not be downplayed. That is the genius of human innovation of overcoming obstacles in order to flourish. And I give daily thanks and appreciation to that, that I am born into a world where I don't have to seriously consider if there is a drought this year, perhaps I might not have food next year because all of my crops will have died. That is not something that we have to think about anymore and it should be appreciated. I'm Daniel Quayer from PeaceFoundAnarchism.com. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Enjoy nature. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin 
My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either, either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day.